In each of My name is Ivan Peterson. I am not Icelandic, I'm Danish and I live in New Zealand for many years. I have been a beekeeper for many years and uh, one day I saw American magazine in 2007 explaining Icelandic beekeepers had a problem, their bees died all the time. And I became interested, I thought I would go up and have a look because I've always been very interested, more than interested, obsessed with bees. So I invited myself up, contacting the beekeepers here. And they were very friendly people, the Icelandic. I've been here many years ago. And I would just present myself and show what happened. I have bees on the brain completely. And uh, it happened to coming out my ears. And it's a lot of fun. And um, they didn't sting me because he was not near their hive. The way I did that, um, I put some honey on my nose and the bees came there and afterwards I just rubber and they flew away again. But anyway, when I come to Iceland the first time in 2008, um, I was interested in, in the white clover and the development of that because that depends on bees and I thought I still think very important for farming and here I am in some Icelandic beehives and telling the morning bladder about beekeeping and just to show how obsessed I was me and my wife got married in bee suits that's because it was a wet and cold day and we thought we could get married but just in case the sun should start shining we took bee suits on so if it was good weather we could get back to beekeeping. You can always get married but you can't always go beekeeping. So okay. Now we will go on to the next bit. So. Okay. Yeah, in two thousand and eight there were in Iceland about seven beekeepers with maybe thirty beehives amongst them. And most of them died the following year. And they tried so hard in 2009, uh, they got some in from Norway, near, they nearly all died. And eventually, I believed, and together with Icelandic Mickey, would make little houses to have them in to prevent the wet air in the winter time. That seemed to make a difference. And the number of beekeepers have steadily increased. And this year, to my surprise, very much surprised, there are 39 new beekeepers on top of the existing ones. And I got a little magazine showing some of these taking package bees home. These package bees come from Åland, a little island in the Botnik Sea, I think belong to Finland. And um, that I become very much interested in and we decided to make a little film about package bees especially for first time beekeepers okay. I will now demonstrate what is needed when you get the package bees first and that is you have to be prepared you have to have something ready because you come with a little box and um, there's many ways of doing it and I think there might be they might be done in 39 different ways, I don't know. But I know one way they will work. We'll just take this apart and we'll come back to it later when I do this. And on top here I have 10 frames of bee frames, new, new foundation and wax. We'll take that away too. And um, then there are two boxes. But inside that there is a package bee box. And what I would do or have done when you receive it, you take the queen cell out and open for one end so the bees will release it, release the queen by eating the sugar paste. You put the queen cell there, just leave it, and put the whole thing very different, very carefully down again. 
you must remember none of these bees have been out they don't know where this place is so that's all you do for now and you put this 10 frames back on and maybe some bees come out but they can smell the queen and you put this back on um, they need feeding but we'll see that in a second if in one or two days they will have gone up into this box and at that time we need we need something to uh, to put them on and you take without taking the roof up you take the new package bees which are now up in this box very carefully and put down there this is what I'm going to take a second take these two boxes away and take this away and put the new family very carefully back on this floor in this case the floor and the roof are the same mainly because of Icelandic climate they need to be kept warm now the bees will now have been out in one or two days they know where they live and it's now time to feed them they have got absolutely nothing so when they have settled in maybe the second or the third day and you have a look this, this package species is not a big family it's only very small to compare to what they can be they can fill three boxes no trouble but in this case we, we take it carefully up and you might need to have a bee suit on but you find they're in one side and only on three frames so they have to keep the whole lot warm and that is not always easy in Icelandic climate so we take some frames out say maybe four of them to make it a bit smaller and I have made some wooden frames all they do is take up space and we put them in instead so they now is you really need more than that uh, make some and uh, they don't have to keep the family don't can easier keep that warm when they get bigger and they begin to fill that one you take one out and put another one in of frames and so on until the whole box is full and when you get them all in again like that maybe over one or two weeks you are then ready but only when that box is full of bees are we ready to put another box on and we'll do that now so we can see what that looks like no not, not yet no not yet oh, sorry and before they get that far to expand we need to feed them this is a standard lung strut feeder which the bees can com come up into into this compartment but they cannot come into the other bit this is ideal for keeping them warm and that is something you have to think about all the time to keep them warm because the bees only do something when they are warm 32 and 33 degrees celsius so now this is designed for a big family but we only got a small family and they cannot get in here so what I will do is take this thing out altogether we can store it in here and they had where did that go? Yep. and uh, a small family only need a small a small portion at a time so that will be ample a thing like that and tidy and clean and fill it up nearly full of sugar water 50 50 50% sugar, 50% lukewarm water. Waste a little down there so they know it's there. But before you put it in, 
we need something to put on top. They can float on top so they don't drown in it. Bits of wood, something like that, but it must be clean. Now the advantage of doing this, you can fill it up, but filling many liters in here, this needs to be cleaned afterwards, otherwise yeast in the air can make it ferment and you get a thin film of alcohol on top and they will not take it. But this one here, it, they will take very fast and you can give it some more. When the bottom box is full of bees, this needs to come off. And now the expansion of the family begins. And we put another box on top. We ten new ones. Before we do that, take one of the outside frames out with bees and everything and honey on it and put an empty one in. Put the other one on top. Don't wash the bees off, don't use smoke. Put it in the middle where it is warmest. Always push all 10 frames together so they are exactly 34 millimeters between each one. That is what the bees will do in a, hollow, in a hollow tree. So we also do that here. It's best to do what the best for the bees, not what the bee, beekeepers think. What the beekeeper thinks in most cases have nothing to do with it. The, the bees only work with Now after that, when that box is full, the next stage begin, and that is the queen excluder. Now the honey production can begin if we have good weather and plenty of flowers. The bees can go through this, but not the queen. And it has a certain measurement. The queen got bigger shoulders and will not go through. So you put that on here, like that. And again, like before, before you put a new box on for honey, we do the same again as before. We take one of the outside ones, not in the middle, because there are eggs and larvae there. We leave that alone. These have no interest, they, they understand themselves best. Take one from the outside with honey and bees. Put it in the middle and put an empty one down instead. Now, the queen will not be on the outside one, she will always be in the middle. Now put this back on and put this on. In the middle now, there's a frame with maybe three or four hundred bees. They have moved in in a matter of ten seconds instead of looking at it. So, we now need to put no more on at all, regardless how good they are doing. The reason for it, they need to draw out the wax into cells. And that will not happen unless they get above 30 degrees Celsius. So they need to be kept warm again. This keeping them warm is so important. And we put this on. This top sheet is very excellent in my opinion. And you can actually see through how much they're doing without lifting it up and letting out temperature. And these are very insulating, so we put this on. We now need to check them maybe every two weeks, but we'll come back to that in a moment. Before we go further, there's a few small details you will need to know. And that when you obtain this box, which is quite apparently quite excellent, you get two pieces with it, a right angle plastic, a small and a big end. And that will fit in, in, in there like this. And you just put in and push it down very firm. In both ends. And uh, it will stay like that. It's called rapids. And, and um, that is the English word for it. Normally made of, of steel, but this is plastic and probably even more practical. Now, what happens is between there and the top, and you put a B frame in, you will see now, and when the queen extruder is on, there's very little space left. But if there's any more space left, and say, for example, 
the rabbit was not there, and you think it doesn't matter. It does matter. It's quite important to get it out again. There is now too much space and the bees will start building something on top of the frames. So therefore you need the rabbits or the, the, it needs to get up. The, the bees will not accept any space that is bigger than a bee space. One bee space is, if you can imagine, the bees do not stand up right there like that. So it's, it's from the floor up to the shoulders of the bees and that is one bee space and this here between there and there is less than one bee space therefore they will not fill it up with rubbish and wild buildings much easier to keep clean so they are important okay yeah the, the roof here or the top have got a thing made into it and that is one bee space high so the bees can can go in there it can also be a floor that's all the space they need no more and it's better as little as possible to keep them warm that is what the first thing you remember all the time but now the bottom and the top are the same it has in other countries where they have the might and sicknesses they have devised this to combat sicknesses it is a specialized floor they have a grate in it and a little drawer underneath you can take out and when you poison the mites they would fall through and you could count how many thousand there are and uh, also ventilation but Iceland have not got 28 or 29 degrees Celsius in the summertime maybe a lot less so it's more important to keep them warm here and also we have not got the mice we have not got the sickness so this here is more or less expensive but only good for the rubbish tip therefore keep it warm what is suitable for Iceland climate and what is best for the bees come first. The boxes are not very big in height and therefore if they were deeper it would be very difficult in a short Icelandic summer to finish a frame completely and if they are nectar coming in they got too high water content maybe 60 or 70 percent instead of down to 14 when extracted the honey might ferment so if you want first class honey, use smaller boxes so they can finish a frame. We will talk about this later. Yeah, so we just have a look how the frames are as they come. They are made overseas, I believe in Denmark. And it's called Lang. Yeah, we have a look at the wooden frames in this case and the plastic ones later this one here is the Langstroth measurement and type and uh, it's an excellent idea it was invented in America in the 1980s by a priest he thought he had a beehive in a round thing made of straw very difficult to harvest and he thought one day coming home from church that he would make a box, a square box with frames where the bees could go all the way around and in between and it was an excellent idea they were made by the millions later he died like a poor man and never got any money for it but that is always been the case with good ideas so we now put them together um, and see how it works they are will be between there and the next one 34 millimeters from middle to middle and next one so they need to come close together and um, the bottom one comes in like that on top of that we need some nails to put in Thank you. 
and it also gives a good exercise using tools when you made a few thousand of them you can do it very fast without bending the nails and only using about three hits for each nail so after that comes some wires that goes in there are two holes in each end and we need to put some wires in to reinforce it for, for when it goes into the extractor otherwise it could fly it to pieces um, so we thread this wire through I, I got the wire on the little reel here and uh, I nailed a piece of wood here if I don't do that it might go like that and uh, create problems so this is a better way of doing it and this costs nothing you have to be have innovation to devise something what is most practical and cheapest at the time now this is not the only way of doing it but it is one way of doing it I have here a stapler and I put in a stapler that will not hold it but you, with a little bang it will so we need to cut it up that is important to cut up bend it over hard first and then cut off close and if you don't do that you might cut your skin later when you work the frames now we need to avoid getting curls otherwise the wire will break and now another tool some hold the pliers and I will tighten it so hard that they will remain straight and bend it over and hold it and put another staple in Also, this up. Now, I don't know if you can hear it. I have sometimes fallen for the temptation I put four wires in, and late on Saturday evening, after a few beers, I could actually play a melody. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? We will now see the plastic frames. So we have the other version commonly in use at the moment, the wooden frame and the plastic frame. The plastic frame is not natural for the bees and in a, sh in a short summer like in Iceland and on top of that if you have a sensitive skin or something white or measured and you feel on the plastic frame is cold, feel on the wood is not cold. Therefore, the bees need more energy to warm up enough to make cells from the wax and they can only sweat the wax out of the segments from the body when they reach a certain temperature. So the plastic frames have to be heated first, where the wooden frames there's not that much difficulty. If you have ten plast uh, nine plastic frames and one wooden frame, they will fill that one first, more or less no matter where it is in the box. On top of that, to get the bees started, this has already been done, we brush off some molten wax on the frame, so because um, as it's not natural they need something to get started, this has already been a little start here. This is not the only problem with plastic frames, they are also very difficult to clean, and in particular if they have been below the queen excluder and used for food with eggs and larvae, they are extremely difficult to clean. I will now demonstrate one way of how to clean a frame that need to be cleaned because they need to be cleaned now and then. This one here is not difficult. That can be dipped in boiling water, but you cannot put this one in boiling water. It will have a different shape when it comes out. Now, I have here one plastic frame that needs cleaning and it's getting dark and it had brood in it, got pollen in it and the honey bee eaten and I can try to see if I can clean it and to 
some extent we have put it in a deep freeze and it looks like it made a little bit difference to it but it is still not clean and that there cannot even with hard press high pressure water not get it up but one thing you cannot do you cannot use boiling water or steam it will bend the frame so therefore I think the best thing about plastic frames is not to use them they are not practical it's too much labor and it's not natural for the bees and they're hard to clean so they go together with the floor before in the rubbish bin and this one too I'm sorry to say but this works a lot better and they can be used many times this one here when they're dirty you've got a lot of work you do not need to do if you had wooden frames and the bees work much better with wooden frames okay we now are going to put some wax uh, sheets of foundation as it's called into this frame and it has a groove in the top in, and, and a groove in the bottom <coughs> so the thing is to to put that into this into this groove like that <coughs> excuse me and and put it into the bottom one like that and you can see it's now embedded there but I have a little piece of wood here which I will now melt the two wires into this wax and I think I have a little embedding wheel here which I can do that with they have heated it on the stove over there so it's, it is hot let's just see how we can do that and it will I think no got to stop not warm enough the wheel we have warmed here on the electric stove and we will now put the wax uh, the wire into the wax like this by running a slow over and heating the wire but it will sink into the wax then and uh, it is an old-fashioned way a car battery with 12 volt would be a lot faster but if you only got one beehive this might be a, a, a better way it will not take that long to make a box of frames of 10 frames I think if I took time how long will it do to uh, make one frame like this it might be less than one minute let's just have a look on the other side and it's even too much there but you can see the wire is now in the wax and after a little while a few hundred of them you will be an expert this but some frames are not always like this and a little, another little thing we shall see here this is not a frame and this has no grooves in it neither top or bottom I have not seen quite like that before and it took me nearly three seconds to think about what I should do about that and you need to think about something straight away so I thought what I would do I would bend a sheet over like this and and then put that into the frame like that and then fit it in in the other side now all it reminds now is to put some staples in and then like before we can then put the wires in like I did and but it is better if there are grooves but it does not mean it can it's the only way it can be done as you now see it can be done different ways so we will okay where we have decided 
we've got a package bees and we but before that I will show how I got my bees about 10 or 12 in one place they have shelter from the wind and can you see the tire marks here I can drive right up to them and um, <coughs> take the honey off there are two boxes a queen excluder and one box in all of them my beehives never get higher than that because I take honey off all the time and that's you see the tire marks where I've been now this is okay for New Zealand and other countries but maybe not for Iceland Iceland is a different climate and now I have diff uh, different places in New Zealand and some of them would be suitable for Iceland. This is another place. I have about 19 places like that. And this here is about 12 hives. And again, they're made of wood, but not to worry. They got a landing space, one, two boxes, and a queen excluder, and one box. And they never get higher than that in my beekeeping because I keep taking full frames out and put empty ones in all the time all throughout the summer anyway this one is different from before this is a place where there used to be cows or you might be sheep I don't know but anyway it's no longer used you got a roof over it and the sun coming in and sheltering for the wind I think that would be most suitable for Iceland to keep the wet weather off in the winter time so if there is any buildings that have been used anywhere near you, maybe 10 kilometers, it could be much better than in your garden. So you not you can't see them every day, but you will not annoy the neighbors and you might survive the winter by choosing a place like that. And I think the farmer would be very happy to have them pollinating the white clover in the paddock and things like that. You, but make sure you've got a place you can drive to all winter and apart from that uh, most most houses you can do that and uh, that is a good place to place the bees it's not really what the suits the beekeeper nothing to do with it it's what is best for the bees yeah now um, when you deal I will explain something about my relationship with the bees I love the bees, the bees hate me, and it's a love-hate relationship, but we are doing okay. I go around the world once a year based on this relationship, and they steal the honey from other people's lands, I steal the honey from the bees and sell it, put the money in my pocket, go around holiday. It works very well, but I need to be dressed up for the occasion. Now you go for a better dinner, you have tie and white suit, but for beekeeping, you have to be the part. So now we will show that. But before I do, I will show you what I, what I have here. Um, a bee suit. It consists of one piece only. And it is, as far as I'm concerned, a uh, four times XL because it needs to be loose and I like to tell you about my bare arms this canvas cotton is not quite enough you really need two layers of clothing and uh, the white gum boots if you haven't got white gum boots paint them white the bees seem to ignore the white colors and they seem to attack the darker ones. I don't know why. I don't want to find out either. I've given up on that. I just have white gumboots. It's so much easier than finding out about why. And these two things and they are my gloves. They are also XXL it stands for extra la uh, large. Okay. 
you can see they're being used. We'll, later we'll talk about the treatment and, and, and uh, what it do about. But now, the last thing is a high tool. So we have gumboots, gloves, a suit and high tools, four pieces. It's all I ever have, nothing else. And there are other things we'll talk about later, but for now, these are the four things. And we'll just, we'll just try to... We we'll just try to take time, and I haven't got a watch, so I will write here, start. Can you see it? Start. Okay. Now, so the first thing I do, I take my shoes off. I've been in the army and I've been trained how to do things fast because when you go to many different places I'll just sit down and they are elastic in the legs and in the sleeves nearly 40 seconds now and the gun boots is also oversized and go down you have to have them over, over up the elastic, elastic over outside many have different opinions but nothing is like learning the hard way and getting 100 bees down the gun boots you learn it must be on the outside if you don't believe me, just try it with that question, please. Now we have two sips. And another one on the hood. Now this thing, there are no strings attached. And then the gloves. So, one and two, and then your tool, and you're ready. Now I have to take it off again, and that is one, two, three, and This is right down, push the right down like that, and on the outside the gun push. If you have the inside, it's really a big job, but it's not now. So, back in your other shoes. Finish. Raise the sun, <laughs> and you can find out how long it took. Okay. And another one, also a smaller suit, called a singlet suit, and that can be put on in, in more or less, I think. And another one, <coughs> which is also interesting, is a singlet type, and it can be put on. In, in about one one second so that doesn't take too long of course you have to have some overalls underneath and you, with elastic in in the sleeves and in the so then you do not have any strings or things to do but to take it off again is just as fast about one second and now in the winter time 
this here is giving good vision and it is black you cannot see through white netting very easy but black is easy so in the winter time you store it away and it is not enough not even you can have the clean gloves in a tube like that but it's still not enough we have to support this and what I have been doing you can pack these papers in until you get until you get a, a um, so it's held that like that because if it gets if it gets a kink in it it's very difficult to straighten again so when you pack it out like that you can then be kept in a box or something maybe together with some mice mouse proportion or something so nothing too in that should be quite safe then now with with the color being white i use white gumboots you always you can always find a bee colony that have chains and getting very aggressive or if you disturb them duly and if you have only shoes and there is a little gap then the bees with my one bee will sting there and the other bees can smell the poison and before long you will be doing a bee dance and give up beekeeping for that day so have gum boots have you not got white gum boots paint them white it doesn't cost anything and they could be used for that uh, now the, the other things we have is the tool the hive tool there are several types and this one I think is one of the best ones you can have um, I will show you how it works if let us imagine this box is full of bees and they've been there for some time you can use this for loosening this because it, it could be sitting quite hard and, and when you get that off like that just there would be bees underneath just put it carefully to one side now you should always start in the, out, in the outside and it could well be there is so much wax and propolis that is hard to get apart so what we need to do is to loosen both ways until it's loose then with this you put it in there and lift it up like that and with that hand you hold that and the other end and you lift it up like that this this is the best tool for that if you if you use any other things um, screwdrivers or so it's not so practical that it's built for this now it could well be it's sitting so hard that you pull the frame apart it's only a small nile so if that happens stop and put it back don't do any more it needs to be done something else I have another little machine here and we need the hive tool again to loosen the box like that and put it upright now this will loosen it so you bang at the bottom like that and there until they are loose still with the bees in it no smoke and carefully you put it down again and now you can take the frames out so this is no matter how hard it is that will loosen them yeah now all over the world the bees are the same it's only the beekeepers that are different and if you get 10 beekeepers together they will have 12 different opinions they cannot all be right but they can all be wrong anyway something about this smoker and there is a lot of people that think this is the most important tool the beekeeper can have 
and the teasing is to put something in it and a lot of smoke comes out and you go around keep a few puffs and lift this and give some more puffs and wait a few seconds I am sure it irritates the bees no end and in fact if you have a good bee suit and gloves and gun boots, you don't need it. It takes time to keep it, it going. It is quite expensive and uh, I will go as far as say that it is probably irritate the bees no end. So when they see the beekeeper coming with this, they, oh no, here he is again and let us eat some honey and get out of it. But I love my bees, so I decided I will not use a torture instrument like this to annoy them. And what's more important is if there are frames of honey in here, in, in the honey box, that is not completely finished and cut, but half finished, this smoke will be absorbed in the liquid honey and it will taste of smoke if you give too much and uh, even a little bit but even more important than that further down there is a thousand babies or more one or two days old before they before they are sealed and and um, that gives me a thousand reasons as to why not to use it. Each reason is you should not smoke around babies. So therefore, as far as I'm concerned, on the rubbish tip. I have six of them. I could sell them on the internet for a lot of money. But I love my bees too much and I know it would be used to irritate the bees I love. So on the rubbish tip it goes, no good. You don't need it. I haven't used it for the last 20 years and I'm doing okay without it. It is something you don't need, it takes time, it costs money, it's much easier not to do. Yeah, we're gonna have a look at what the bees are feeding on. Many different types of flowers and, and bushes and trees. But here in Iceland, late July, not being rain and the ground is dry, see how it has cracked. And But nearby, there's a plant called the white clover. It's green, and but it's a cold day, so there's no bees today at hope. But let us go up a bit further and have a look. There are millions of them, a long way away. It does not matter if they're 500 meters away from where your beehives are. The bees will find them. I like to come with me and have another look at some different sorts of them because there are many types of white clover and why they giving nectar for such a long period. Yeah, come with me. See here, there is one that is a little bit red inside and if that get mixed with the high and the silas, this becomes a lot more valuable for cows and, and sheep. Over here is a white one, it's a different type again, and they spread in patches. Because they get pollinated by the bees, they produce a lot more seeds. We'll just have a look at one would it take almost anyone? Uh, the it coming up in the middle and bending over to the side and then down. It is when it's about halfway, the nectar is there, and the bees <coughs> can scent or smell where it is, and fly maybe only one or or 
two of these things and then to the next one and when on a good sunny day there's hundreds of bees here and you can see them them go like that when they take the weight of the bees now this keep coming up in the middle all the time and new ones coming up this one here have just started and there's nothing so as some gets ripe a new one comes up it's very resilient it can grow in dry conditions and where there is just grasses this here is green and lustrous and very high food food value for silence and high and grazing so the bees develop these ones it might take a little time but over four years i think it have been very impressive this is i think fantastic and see there are other flowers but this one the one you can rely on so it is important to put the beehive not too far away but three or four hundred meters away it makes no difference the bees will find it and uh, the shelter like near the trees so the wind is not too hard uh, on on the bees then you have have possibilities for a good honey harvest Yeah, we're going to see if we can get a little bit of honey. Um, we need to show that for this little film. And um, I have got a little machine here called a wheelbarrow. It is a one wheel, one wheel, one man power. One wheel, one wheel drive and one man power. And uh, it has been used for cement before, but now we would use it for beekeeping. So it's also very versatile and it saves from lifting one box full is 20 kilos and two would be 40. But doing it this way through difficult terrain, day and night, sunshine or rain, this still works and it's not all that heavy. And I have one box in it and we will try to see what I have done. I will just demonstrate. Now it's important when you steal the honey from the bees, they have no intention of collecting honey for me. That is completely my idea. So I would hide it in this box and it is done in such a way so they can't smell it. It's a case of now you see it, now you don't. And underneath the box which is, I have stapled some cardboard. So no smell can get out there. On top there's a wet towel I put in water, not because it's raining, but so no smell can get through it. So we will take out a frame and put one full of honey in here and close it up straight away. And hopefully we could get back out again without getting one bee with us. We are now here with a, a little beehive. It is a cold day and they're not flying very much, but they are they have done some work. I'm using this new with no bees as a table for my box for the honey. And this one here I will use as a table for what I need to put away. I don't really want to put it any boxes down on the ground if I can help it. And I could also use the roof as a place to put it. But just for now, yeah, we will we'll put that over here. Now, I, it doesn't look very much for the first one. I can see through this transparent. So I now need my high tool and loosen it. Sideways, and now it's loose. And I now try the weight and know how much 20 kilos is if it's full or not, and there's not enough weight here. It will not look anymore at all. I put it aside. Now the next one. They are empty frames, and some they look interesting. We need for this little film to demonstrate a little bit. So we will try to see what you can find. And now remember what I did last time showing we now we will show it. We 
Lucian one frame, both ends, and lift one end up, and then the other is half capped and a bit more than half. But there's one thing about the weather for two days the bees are not flying, so what is not capped is not something they have come in today and therefore will not have a high water percentage. But you got some bees on it and we I don't want the bees with me. I want them to stay here. Many of these bees have not been outside before. Maybe they can't even fly yet, but therefore don't put them outside, they need to come back inside. I have a little brush here in Denmark and New Zealand, so they use this. But in a country where they have bee sicknesses, it might not be a very good idea going from one beehive to another. It might be a good idea if you want to make the brush dirty. But there are other ways. So, out west, no good. And one of the other ways is, very carefully, if you can find a place, And I think now the wet towel have to come aside. I put it in and put it over straight away. Now the reason is for this is the bees only work by scent. <laughs> Even if they show where I put it, it would mean nothing. But if they can smell where it is, it mean a lot. And the first bee that get some honey and go back in, will tell the rest. And I will have 2,000 bees in there in five minutes' time. So it's important they cannot smell where it is. We'll just have a look and see if we can get any more. No. Yeah, this one looks a bit better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. So we will take that one too. And uh, we'll do the same trick without killing anyone. And with the back of the glove. Now I have some new frames here I can put back in and they should really very carefully these ones here they're still working on and have a look these bees are filling honey in when they're working this is a plastic frame but I don't want to disturb them not with smoke they have not understood something is happening and see there is lots of bees on it so I move it over to the center this is where it is warmest and that's where it's happening so all of them go so very carefully and the new ones come in on the outside now the honey harvest is finished. I better close this up for this hive because we can get no more. The next one, there is a queen excluder. But whilst we are here, we will just have a look. We'll just have a look at before you start. Okay, <clears throat> we will just have a look while we're here about the queen and the boot and what what is happening further down and uh, I need to get rid of this here so that can go over to this parking area over here here we have the queen excluder the queen cannot get up to the honey boxes and uh, it's all below there so we just have to loosen that
and um, we have a look. I don't like to disturb them too much if I see there's healthy brood and larvae there. Mm -hmm. I stop, the queen is there and I do not need to see her. Quite apart from, I must be careful not lowering the temperature in the middle of the family. It is not very really warm outside today, so I might kill a young, a thousand young ones just by looking at them, so I don't want to do that. So anyway, we'll have a look. There are queen cells here. Two of them nearly finished. There's one I broke by taking it up. And see the queen larva in there. This one is still intact. And there's one here. I don't know if you can see if you zoom in. There's an egg in there. So this hive are preparing to swarm. These ones here are drones, the male ones, they are much bigger and they do not produce honey. But anyway, we have seen enough. They are queen cells. This one here is more than seven days old. It has been kept, but I ruined it now so we can take it away. This one here is still intact. And uh, I think that is all I will do. I put it in again. I have boxes around ready to catch swarms when that happens. And normally they will hang close by and look for a new home. So they have somewhere to look at. We got to close it back now before it gets too cold. But I would never take the family more apart than that. I would just so there are 34 millimeters between each one. We now have a lot of bees here, so we've just got to make sure. The beehive visit is finished and we will go back and see what we got and what we can do with that. On location because of the rain <coughs> and my overalls got a bit dirty so we will have to be washed. But one thing I like to tell I forgot before and this got a plastic zip and if you use washing powder that is so strong like you use for babies' nappies, that will be too much for this plastic zip and it will not hold together so be careful, just cold water wash will be fine. Okay, so now we have harvested some honey or taken some honey off or stolen the honey from the bees and it's here in this box with a red towel. You'll just see um, how do you put it on nil? How do you put it on nil? When you, it's always nil. Um, how much? Two frames, empty frames, with the honey and how heavy they are, and. Uh, Four hundred and ninety grams, close to half a kilo. Okay. So now the dinosaurs, an interesting thing starts. Maybe there'll be aggressive bees in here. I hope not. We will have a look very carefully. We will open up. Doesn't look that very many. Nothing. Wasn't that lucky. So. 
condition and the next one. No beach? Good. So now we have three kilos and 230, and you've got to take half a kilo of that. Uh, no, this uh, um, We are now going to take some of that honey off. I will. And we can take this away. And I have here a bucket with a very fine sieve. It's just a string holding it on. And um, we're going to put into here. Many beekeepers have a lot of equipment, but you don't need very much. You only need a spoon. So we will put it in here. You have to remember. This is no more than five minutes after we took it off the bees. So that will still be warm from the hive. And I will put it into here. Like this. I think I better do it on the other side. Like that. And uh, this is all I need. And we will, because it's still warm, we can now, this is liquid, fresh, tiny, and we might not give it get at all, but it's not, it's not going to be wasted because we're going to put these empty frames back on the beehive, and so there will be nothing wasted. It looks like it has been used for food substrate, but I think this will not go through the seed anyway. That is why the queen extruder is important, so we do not get, no, it's only pollen. They can do that, still do that, but pollen is also vitamin, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I will now turn to the other one, and I don't think it will take more than a minute for each one when we finish. And I hope we will get about two kilos out of it. You won't get it all, but can you see? You must be careful not to damage the middle there. And it's nearly, nearly clean of money. Oh, I, I made a hole. That could happen. So, This is about the bees can have the rest in this one. You see what? It took nearly 90% or more of it, but we will find out. So, I have to, what I will do, I think, I used a the one there because then it will not do. And we now do the next one. That is a bit cleaner one. We just have to get started. So I'll take a little bit of time plowing it up. If, if it is sitting in the beehive for a long time and you wait till the whole box is full, you might not be able to do this because 
it could go more hard, but this here is quite liquid. So we will put it into small glass jars next. Well, it's easy to do. And then if it goes thicker in there, it doesn't matter. But if, if we do that, it can then last in the glass jars for many years without going bad. And it is stored at room temperature, not in the fridge. So when we finish this and in the towel, we will wait again. I don't think the towel will weigh very much, but we will, we will calculate that. And I think, I think we will get two kilos out of it and back to the beehive. This, this can be done all summer. And if you have scales like this, you can then add it together and find out how much you get out of one hive. And this, this would be absolutely first class honey. The most amazing part of it is, it's one of the few things that cost absolutely nothing. And all you have to do is to steal it from the bees. And if you do it fast, they won't even notice. I hope you noticed I didn't use smoke. I didn't use a brush. All I used was one hive tool and now a spoon. And that is something, if you understand a spoon, you can do this. And it's not difficult to understand a spoon. Even a baby can understand what a spoon is. And so fill a spoon up with honey and put it in your mouth and you know you have got something that costs absolutely nothing. You cannot get it better than that. Uh, in this expensive country of Iceland, this must be really something of interest. As far as myself is concerned, I have an allergy. Oh, look, there was one thing. I have an allergy against expenses. It makes me nervous. It's only money that's coming in that, that calm my nerves down. So I think it's about the best we can get it. And uh, we'll just see. Yes, I have an idea. And just just wait a moment. I'll be, be with you. We'll use a bit of serviette and put them on the scales again. And see if we have reduced the weight by two kilos, I hope we can. So yeah, one kilo five grams. Remember it was three kilos two hundred and something grams before. So I am sure we got two kilos. Now, what I have to do now is to give this back to the bees before it, it trips all over the place and pack it in this wet towel so they come into good use too. Plus the spoon is full of honey. The bees will clean it all up. We will not lose, we will not lose one grain and nothing cleaning. But this one here, this I will use the spoon again for a little bit because it's something I want to show you. And this is a mixture of wax and honey. Can you see it? This is now running through. It's quite liquid. But I don't know if you can see it yet. If I hold it sideways. In the bottom, can you see there is a slight dark thing? So we are getting collected. So we will just put a piece of newspaper across and come back later and see what has happened. Oh, well, we can use this. I hate to waste anything. So now we have to wait until it's gone down. It won't take long. And I, then after that, I will take the sieve off and give that back to the bees as well to clean out. And that is how honey extraction is done. Begin. Now, now we have the answer. 
kommer til et næste afsnit, det er så, vi har taget en lille smule honning af, der var to kilo, men det har ikke dryppet igennem sin endnu. No. Yeah, we have finished uh, taking some honey off. There was about two kilos, as you saw before. And we had taken a little bit out of the bucket just to show. And it is quite bright in color and uh, very tasteful. I have a little plate here with some biscuits on. Yeah. <coughs> nu har vi så få en lille smule honey ud af spanden. Det, altså det står stadigvæk og drypper igennem sin, det vil tage en eller to timer. Så, men vi skulle jo gerne prøve at smage, mens det stadigvæk er frisk. Og så har vi en lille tallerken her med nogle kiks på. Og det vil vi så gerne, meget gerne, specielt mig, for at finde ud af, hvordan det smager. Det synes jeg har en dejlig gylden kulør. Og så putter lidt på en kiks. Og så vi er lige at dreje skeen rundt, så det ikke drypper. Det vil ikke godt. Ellers, så, når der er uden for tallerkenen, så må man altså være i stand til at køre på, det, på den måde. Så at det ikke drypper, uanset hvor meget der er på skeen. Det er også en kunst. Og kan I se det? Ja, det kan man godt gøre. Så, how about that? Now, there's one for me. And uh, do you want one? Yes, please. Oh, <laughs> no, I mean the camera. Or <laughs> well, the camera, don't eat. Oh, that's good. Mm. Try it again. Have another one. Thank no. You. This is for the next time. A little, and in the next segment, I took a film last week here in Iceland of a little invention a beekeeper with one bee had done, consists of a bucket and a contraption and electric drill. He could put frames in. Then you can take the cabins up with this very carefully without just getting the wax and nothing else and put into that. But that is in Icelandic language and hopefully somebody can put that in the film, but that is as far as I can go. So thank you and have a lot of fun with your beehives.